they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him, and the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. This is the account of Good Friday. So after the Last Supper, which is what we learned about in our last lesson, Jesus goes out onto the Mount of Olives to pray with his disciples. While they are there, that is when Judas Iscariot betrays him. He brings an armed mob to come and arrest Jesus because he knew he'd be there and he knew it'd be quiet. Basically, what was going on was the Jewish religious leaders didn't like what Jesus was saying. They didn't like that he was preaching that anyone could know God uh, and that the kingdom of heaven was open to anyone who trusts in him. They wanted to keep everyone under their religious system. But they could see that Jesus was freeing them from that system and freeing them to real, the real life of heaven. But the problem for them was that Jesus never ever did anything wrong. He never did anything bad, he never broke the law. So they couldn't arrest him legitimately. They had to bring false charges against him to get the political leaders of Rome to kill him. And that's exactly what they did. They brought these false charges against him and the Romans murdered Jesus by nailing him to a cross. Now, I don't want to dwell on this too much because it's a bit gruesome and I, and I don't want to dwell on it for the sake of it, but I think it's important. I think it's important to understand what crucifixion was. Because you see, it wasn't bad enough that they wanted to kill Jesus, a man who'd never done anything wrong, like anything wrong. But what made it worse is that they chose to kill him by crucifying him. Crucifixion. Now, crucifixion was a method of uh, execution that was devised by the uh, Romans and it was designed not to kill the person quickly but to make the death as long and as painful as possible. You see what would happen is that they would nail, um, they would lay the, the person down naked on the ground on the cross uh, and then they would hammer a good 15 centimeter long iron nails either into their palms of their hands or into their wrists um, and into their feet as well. And then they would, once they were nailed to the cross, laid down, they would raise the cross up and leave them hanging there so that all of their body weight was being held up by those nails. And this would be painful enough, but it wasn't that. It isn't the nails that would actually kill them. You see, sure, that there would, of course, be a bit of blood, but these aren't areas of your body where there are big arteries. So it wasn't that they'd lose enough blood to die. In crucifixion, the person died not by bleeding out, but by asphyxiation, by suffocating. Just um, place your hands on your chest, on your rib cage, and take a deep breath and see what happens. Do you see that? And then your shoulders as well, look. When you breathe, your, sh your rib cage lifts and your shoulders lift. Now imagine doing it with all hanging by your hands. You can maybe try this later. Or just put your hands up in the air and take a deep breath. And it's, it's harder, there's, there's a tightness around your chest. It's, 
it's harder to get a really deep breath because your shoulders are already up. They, they can't go up. Your, your rib cage is already out. It's got nowhere further to go. You can't breathe like that as easily. Now, just imagine trying to do that. So what would happen is they would have to, 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 to try and breathe. They would have to pull themselves up on their, on their hands and on their feet, putting all their body through the all their body weight through the um, through the nails in their hands and their feet and so each breath would mean they had to pull their whole body weight up but not holding on to anything but by nails driven through them and eventually they'd be so exhausted by the pain and so exhausted by having by losing their breath that they just couldn't do it anymore and they would slowly just sink down and suffocate it could take hours Sometimes it could take days for somebody to die through crucifixion. It's gruesome. It's, it's horrible. And so the question is, why do Christians call the day that Jesus died on the cross, that he died from crucifixion, why do we call it Good Friday? There doesn't seem to be anything good about it. How do we understand why this is good? Well, to answer that question, we need to go back to the beginning. In the beginning, God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, three persons united in love, created humanity. He created male and female and he placed them in his garden temple in Eden, to live with him and to enjoy his life that he gave to them and shared with them. Everything was perfect. It was just the way that God made it to be and wanted it to be, living with humanity, loving them and sharing his life with them. But humanity, Adam and Eve, rejected God's rule. They rejected God's life and they walked away from him and decided to follow their own way. And that meant that they were cut off from God. A great big barrier between God and man had come up. Sin and death. Cut off from God who is the source of all life now humanity was no longer filled with life but lived under the rule of death Adam and Eve were plunged into death and darkness cut off from God and it meant that all of their children were as well their children were cut off from God their children were cut off from God, their children from cut off from God, and down and down and down and down it goes until we get to you and me. This is what the Bible teaches. This is our big problem, that we're cut off from the life of God and we're now living under the reign of death. We are under the power of death and the devil, and we need saving. Humanity needed saving from the death that we have put ourselves in. We needed a way back to God. But we could never get back to God because of this barrier of sin and death. And so, instead of us going to God, God came to us. Do you know the story of uh, Christmas? Uh, the nativity story of Jesus being born as a baby in Bethlehem? That was God joining us. God coming to us in Jesus. Jesus, the Son of God, still fully, truly God, becomes truly man, takes on human flesh and joins us. But he'd come to us. We still needed a way back to God the Father. And so when Jesus came, he came and he joined us and he took all of our sin and our shame and he carried it to the cross. 
He took all of our brokenness and on the cross he defeated death and the devil. Jesus took all the sin of the world, all of our brokenness, our pain and our shame when he died on the cross. On the cross, Jesus defeated death so that we no longer had to be under the rule of death and the devil and made a way back to God. Now anyone, anyone who trusts in Jesus, who receives his life, follows him, asks for his forgiveness, in him can now have a way back to God the Father to enjoy the life of heaven eternally forever. That's what happened on Good Friday. God in Jesus joins us, takes all of our mess, deals with it so that we can come back into the life of heaven and enjoy the eternal life of God. And that is very good news. You see, Jesus came to be a sacrifice. I wonder, what do you think of when you hear the word sacrifice? What is a sacrifice? What does it do? You see, we might have this idea that sacrifices are about making God happy, that somehow he likes death and he wants us to show him how much we fear him by killing things to prove our devotion to him. But that's not a Christian view of sacrifice. That's quite a pagan view of sacrifice. No, the in the Bible, a sacrifice is something that dies instead of a person. The sacrifice was not really for the benefit of God, but for the benefit of the person making the sacrifice. So that as they made the sacrifice, they would be reminded of the seriousness of sin that cuts them off from God, that cuts them off from life. You see, in biblical sacrifice, the animal takes the place of the person. Because of our sin, as humans, we deserve death. But instead of the person dying, an animal dies instead. The sacrificial animal dies in their place. They swap so that they can be free, so that the person can be free to live, free from sin, free from the power of the devil. But actually, there was no way that the blood of lambs and bulls could actually do all of that. And so all of the Old Testament sacrifices were pointing forward to the true sacrifice that would actually do all of that, Jesus. You see, when you read the Gospels, you will see a theme that runs through them. Yes, there is the great story, the great uh, story of Jesus coming and bringing the kingdom of God to earth. But there's another theme, another side of the story, as Jesus shows more and more of his power and his glory, the devil and his demons become more and more active as well. So as the Gospels continue, we see more and more evil activity around Jesus. Evil gathers around Jesus, not because he's evil, but because the devil wants to beat him, to destroy him, to stop him. And so by the time we come to the cross, we see that all the evil of the world is being lured into one place at the cross. And so at the cross on that first Good Friday, there's an epic battle as Jesus who is our mighty warrior, who takes all of our humanity and all of our sin, dies in our place. As all the power of the devil comes against humanity in Jesus, all the power of hell that should have come against us, but instead Jesus takes our place and it goes against him. And he wins for us by dying for us. Which might seem a bit odd to us because 
How can the hero die? Isn't the hero the one who lives? Well, yes. <laughs> we'll get to that in our next lesson. Because that was the only way. The only way to beat death and the devil was to die. The only way to destroy the power of death and the devil was to die. Someone had to die. The perfect lamb of God, the Passover lamb, do you remember? He died instead of us. And the proof then that Jesus defeated death and the devil is the resurrection, which we'll look at in our next lesson. So that is why Good Friday is so good and why the crucifixion of Jesus is so important to Christians. Because it's everything. It's everything to us. That's why it's the symbol of our religion. And so when I look at the cross, when I think about the cross, when I look at the crucifixion of Jesus, yes, of course, I see the ugliness, but that just reminds me how much it cost for Jesus to save me. I see my forgiveness. I see all of my sin and my shame. I see all of the wrong things that I've done, all of my mistakes. I see the things that keep me awake at night, bad things I've done to other people, the foolish decisions that I've made. They don't need to haunt me anymore because they've been dealt with by Jesus. They've been put to death by Jesus on the cross. He has dealt with all of my mess and all my misery. I have been freed from all my sin and all my bad decisions to live a life of joyful satisfaction with Jesus. Does that mean I'm perfect? I never do anything wrong? No. No, of course it doesn't. But it does mean that when I do inevitably mess up, I can go straight to Jesus and ask for his forgiveness and know that he is able to forgive me because he has won the victory over death. He can wash me clean and he can fill me with his life. The cross means all of that. Good Friday means that God is on our side. He has defeated our enemies and made a way back to the life of God.